Genshin Impact has lots of cool stuff happening behind the scenes. The way domains are built, how they achieve nifty lighting effects, and, very rarely, how foundations for future content are put into the game prior to its official release. Well, let's take a look at a few examples from Sumeru, to peek behind the scenes at the places you aren't supposed to see. Number 1. Floating Invisible Labyrinth the Sumeru Desert has its fair share of unique locations. You're maybe already picturing a few, but none of them compare to the oddity that is Kajnesut. Kajnesut before it is made visible during the Golden Slumber quest. Because it's never fully invisible. That's probably why they put a barrier around it. From the outside of the barrier, you won't be able to see anything, but once inside, you can look up. This is Kajnesut before the quest, a labyrinth of floating mechanisms, treasure chests, and enemies. There is really no other way to describe it. Navigating the place requires constant use of four-leaf sigils, and if you happen to be wondering if the mechanisms can be activated, they most certainly can. Even the puzzles can be solved with careful maneuvers. Had a lot of fun solving what I could in here while doing Golden Slumber backwards. Enough so that I wish they added puzzles like this to the game intentionally. Managed to snag a few treasure chests, too. And the poor enemies get caught in respawn loops if aggroed, constantly falling and resetting, falling and resetting. Attempting to defeat them proved difficult as I was using a traveler only account, and eventually I let them be. Number 2 Sumeru's Rainbow Sky. The sky of Sumeru is already a rather colorful thing. The clear starry sky of the desert, the violet hues near Vanarana, there are quite a few of them. However, there are even more that the game hides from the player, such as this black and cyan void located around the arena of the Jade Plume Terra Shroom. This is the game's way of getting its desired lighting effects for the caverns. Changing the skybox is something Genshin Impact does often, but drastic changes are only done in areas where the player can't see said changes. A personal favorite of mine is the skybox of the desert from within ruins. The whole area becomes a sort of cosmic wonderland, stars above and bright gold below. I spent a lot of time in this one when filming Traveler San's desert escapades. Uh, they even have these sky textures in areas where the player may be able to look up and outside from within the ruins. Then there's the ominous red sky of King Deshret's mausoleum. Really cool, albeit a tad bit creepy. Number 3. The Illusions of Domains Sumeru's domains would like you to believe that you're revisiting the same location multiple times or that the environment around you is changing. Neither of those are true. Instead, you're visiting copy and pasted areas that have been tweaked and stuffed into the same map space. Take, for example, Nahida's first story quest domain, where you enter a dream. You begin in a room with a ceiling of water. This is what's beyond the water. The flipped version of the room, which makes you believe you either went above the water or that the water fell down, is actually quite far away. The cafe floats in the air off to the side and can be reached. It's not an easy task, as the entirety of the flat plane separating the different rooms teleports you if you touch it, and one has to navigate to this other room that has the tallest point if you have any hope of reaching it. But I digress. The majority of Sumeru domains are like this, different rooms floating on the map, some within reach, some not. Most are difficult to get out of bounds in and maneuver around, but if you're curious and want to poke around in one, Number 4, Eternal Oasis. I have news for the Tanit tribe. Had they wanted to find the Eternal Oasis quickly, all they had to do was dig about half a centimeter into the ground, drop into the vast endless void, and fall, fall, fall some more. Because the Eternal Oasis is that blotch way down there. 
way down there at nearly the lowest point, just before the Void Out Zone. If you happen to be exploring beyond the confines of the map, you'll find yourself able to enter the Eternal Oasis simply by falling down there and walking into it. Let's return to the surface and take a peek inside Mount Damavand, the place with a giant cyclone that keeps players out. Inside is... a big empty crater. I suppose that's no surprise, but it is an area with a peculiar effect. Once inside, if the player attempts to switch characters... Get out of my way! No sense of respect! That happens, and it'll happen each time you switch. This is due to being within the collision of the barrier, causing the character switched in to immediately get hit. If we journey below ground again, the cyclone comes into full view with all its 2D texture glory. Number 5. Valyrium Mirage Sumeru's Limited Time Wonderland What a difficult place to navigate while out of bounds. Water is everywhere, ready to pull one back into the map and the majority of terrain sits very low, not far above the void out zone. Feels as if I'm playing some kind of platforming game, jumping from support beam to support beam like this. Certainly no shortage of them. They form a not so perfect, but usable bridge to the center of Silver Bottle Courtyard, allowing one to get beneath that swirling sphere of water. Reminds me of being beneath Watatsumi Island's Whirlpool. Breaking into quest or time-locked areas is also possible, such as with this choo-choo cart tunnel that's part of Adia's Riddle quest. It's rare to find rooms that can be entered without crossing a load trigger, but this is what such a thing looks like. Uh-oh, went and stepped over the trigger. Truthfully, didn't find that many wondrous things out here, but I figured I'd showcase something on it. Given the place, may very well be disappearing forever upon the release of 4.0. Number 6. Elevator to Nowhere Let's rewind the clock for today's final two entries, and begin with the elevator inside House of Dana. Riding it takes one to the office of the Grand Sage, but this office didn't always exist, despite the elevator having been here all along. For example, version 3.0, <laughs> definitely no office up here, and entering the elevator normally shows an activation prompt that does nothing. Were one to try from above, however, the elevator would start up, although it's a one-way ticket because the prompt down below still wouldn't work. Number 7. Ruins of the Future We're once again back in version 3.0, at the edges of the rainforest, a place that would soon open up to become the hypostyle desert. We can see the mausoleum of King Deshret, but hidden beyond the cliff sides is another place, Kajnesut. Well, a very simplistic Kajna suit. The pit is here and so are bits and pieces of the ruins. Most notable is the stone archway and its stairs. What makes this peculiar is that there was no viewable angle from within the map boundaries to see this location, unlike the mausoleum. It was neat to see locations that were soon to become the grand designs we saw in trailers, like the original dragon spine before it turned into the mighty mountain it is now. Which, uh, fun fact, still exists as an image within the Knights of Favonius headquarters. How about that? I have videos that further explore many of the things covered here, as well as the hidden image of Mondstadt within the Knights of Favonius headquarters. Check them out on the channel if interested, drop a like and subscribe, and as always, this is Musashi, signing off. Till next time.